what are the causes? What are the causes of respiratory insufficiency? And watch out. Insufficiency. There are many divisions how you can divide this. And I'll tell you one example. And watch out, it's not ultimate division because many of the problems are combined. You can find you know, similarities in this and also in that. But let's somehow, you know, that it's easy for you to divide it in your brains. We can divide it into, I'll give you these four examples. So first of all, we can talk about hypoventilation. So obviously, hypoventilation will cause right away the second type. So you're going to have respiratory acidosis. And what could be the cause? So always when you're going to think of problems with the regulation centers of the respiratory centers, yeah, it's going to cause hypoventilation. Okay, so if there is something with CNS, like opiates, okay, anesthetics, or whatever, if the CNS... Did you say hypoventilation? Yes, hypoventilation. Because we're talking about the insufficiency. So hypoventilation, okay? So with CNS hypoventilation, if you take opiates, CNS is going to be depressed, you're going to hypoventilate, okay? So it could be CNS trauma. If we have, uh, you know, subdural epidural hematoma contusion, yeah, you can hypoventilate, of course. If you're going to have something with spinal cord, typically above C4, the threnicus could be impaired. So you cannot move with the diaphragm. So spinal cord injuries, these higher types, C4 and higher, of course, even higher is going to kill you. But if we talk about these high lesions, yeah. Don't take it also if the phrenicus is impaired by, you know, on the way. So as a peripheral nerve, it could be a problem. Or you can have myasthenia gravis. That means that Although phrenicus is working, um, the end plate is not working. So the diaphragm will get fatigued very easily, but because of the problem with the transmission okay, of the mediator. So it could be myasthenia, but it could be diaphragm itself. As I told you, if you too much ventilate, if there is tachypnea, it's going to get tired. You know, it's a muscle. And... A great example is asthmatic attack. You know, at the beginning, they're really trying hard to breathe, but the diaphragm and the other accessory respiratory muscles, they will get fatigued, and then you're going to start to hyperventilate. So just fatigued muscle itself. Or don't forget if you have a inherited disease of the muscles like dystrophy, muscle dystrophies. So and there are, you know, if you know Dishan, Duchenne, that's a horrible disease. You know, typically children die at the age of 15 or respiratory failure. Yeah? Or you can have restrictive diseases, don't forget. So if the lungs are too much fibrotic, you're going to hypoventilate because you're not able to get rid of CO2. So, and there are hundreds of restrictive diseases you could put here. Or it could be what? It could be also kyphoscoliosis. So the problem is not in the lungs itself, but with the chest wall, or even if you have obesity, of course, you're going to hypoventilate because you're just not able, thanks to the obesity, to, to expand the chest. So many causes, but in general, think of hypoventilation itself. Okay? What about uh, like pectus excavatum? Well, depends. It depends. This, so I don't know how they will be doing. But anyways, any weird shapes of chest, the people will have problems. So, so that's hypoventilation. What could be the other cause? Well, obstruction. So obstruction of the airway. So it could be a foreign body. Food. You know, if you... Inhale steak, that's not a good thing to do. So foreign body inhalation, that's aspiration, it's not good. Asthmatic attack, 
we can put it here. First partial, then global uh, respiratory insufficiency. It could be a tumor. Okay, so anything that grows in the chest, you know, it can compress the airway, so you're going to have obstruction, and of course, COPD. But watch out with the COPD, you know, it's a chronic bronchitis or emphysema. I'll just tell you that this merges with another cause because there are more problems, not only obstruction, but obstruction is the major one, of course. I'll show you that this is another mechanism, and I can already put it here. BQ mismatch works over here as well as a the last mechanism that I'm going to tell you about. Okay, so obstruction. Okay, fine. What else? Well, you can have problems with diffusion. So diffusion problem. Okay, and again, this combines with other problems. But what's the problem? The major problem is the alveolocapillary membrane. And the membrane could be thickened, so the passage of the gases is worsened, the diffusion is worsened. Or you can have lower amount on square meters of the alveolocapillary membrane, okay? But in both cases, you're going to have problems with diffusion, okay? So diffusion problems, and I'm going to put alveolos over here. So I'm going to put capillary in red. Okay, well then of course what happens is this gets thickened. So you can have edema there or fibrotic process or whatever, okay. Or, as I said, in case of emphysema, there's a decreased uh, surface of this. And what causes the problems like if you have edema in here? Well, you can put many things over there. You can put pneumonia, of course. You can have cardiogenic lung edema, lung edema. So that means if the left heart is failing, you can have non-cardiogenic lung edema. And basically I'm heading here to, that's ARDS actually, remember that. And I mean, if we talk about this, there are many causes. It's the hot air inhalation sepsis also we're going to talk about that but those are all causes of ARDS okay so there's something with the alveolar capillary war it gets thickened there's more water there's edema blood gets into the alveoli that's the problem with diffusion actually but when it gets too much also you're having restrictive disease okay so if you have too big edema or a we could say, well, every time the edema is there, the compliance is lower. So again, this would combine with hypoventilation, okay? So at the end, you can put it here as well. Yeah, get it? So, I mean, as it gets more serious, the problems combine, of course. And the last one is VQ mismatch. And this, of course, combines also with uh, other problems. So VQ mismatch. That means that you can have two extremes, okay? If you have al alveolus again, and if you have perfusion over here, V means ventilation, Q means perfusion. And Unfortunately, every time you're having some inflammation in part of the lung or whatever, this can happen. This is what you see. And it has two extremes, okay? One extreme is that the alveolus is not ventilated, it's blocked, by the, but the autoregulation is not working over here because there is inflammation and whatever. So it's profuse. So in this case, what do you call that? It's the right-left shunt through the parenchyma of the lungs. So part of the lungs, some parts, have a right-left shunt. The blood just goes there, but it's not oxygenated, okay? So in the left heart, in left atrium, left, left ventricle, aorta, the blood is mixed. So the partial pressure of oxygen is going to be definitely decreased through this. So that's one extreme. And the other one is the opposite thing. So over here, you're going to have blockage. It could be, for example, in pulmonary embolism. 
or locally, again, some parts of the lungs will be ventilated, but they will not be perfused. So in case this you call increased dead space. And again, there are parts of lungs that are not oxygenating blood because there is a increased dead space. So you're inhaling the air, but this air that will get to the dead space is not used. So when you're having VQ mismatch, the outer regulation is not working over there, and that's why you have these two extremes. But for both of them, the result is that the partial pressure of oxygen that comes out of the lungs into the aorta, that means the partial pressure of oxygen in the blood is decreased. But what I told you, for example, in case of COPDs. So also COPD, and especially, well, both of them, it's about air trapping, remember? So also the thing is that also the alveolus, you know, is more expanded in a way, and there's more air trapped. And this is even more severe with emphysema, where there is a destruction of the alveoli. So in one way, you could put COPD in obstructive problem. There is an obstruction of the air, fine. But also what happens is if the alveoli get like destroyed and bigger, unfortunately, you don't have more vessels. The amount of vessels is the same. So in this case, in a way, again, you are expanding the dead space in COPDs. There's air trapping. So in a way, again, dead space is increased. So basically, there is, a again, right to left shunt. So it's another mechanism. So with COPDs, you should imagine obstruction, but also the VQ mismatch. So as I said, the mechanisms are combined typically, especially when the disease gets more severe. Well, questions for this part? Yeah. Tell me. <laughs> So, uh, you said, I think uh, it was mentioned in physiology sometimes that uh, it, when you have like bronco, bronco constriction or the alveoli are constricted or something, there's an obstruction, you have hypoventilation induced vasoconstriction and vice versa, like vasoconstriction induced. Yeah, yeah, this is failing in this works in healthy lungs. This outer regulation, where if the alveolus is well ventilated, that it's going to be also well perfused, that's in ideal states in healthy lungs. In case you have somewhere pneumonia, this fails. Okay? Okay. okay. This fails, and that's why we have these two extremes. And that's, that's what you call VQ mismatch in general. Okay? So, thanks for watching. And don't forget to subscribe and ring that bell. And as always, check the description below for supplementary questions and other materials.